Salutations my friends. This is the anatomy of the frontal lobe of the brain. The frontal lobe is the largest of the four major lobes of the brain in mammals and is located at the front of each cerebral hemisphere, in front of the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe. It is parted from the parietal lobe by a groove between tissues called the central sulcus and from the temporal lobe by a deeper groove called the lateral sulcus or, sylvian fissure. The most anterior rounded part of the frontal lobe, though not well defined, is known as the frontal pole, one of the three poles of the cerebrum. The frontal lobe is covered by the frontal cortex. The frontal cortex includes the premotor cortex and the primary motor cortex, parts of the motor cortex. The front part of the frontal cortex is covered by the prefrontal cortex. The non-primary motor cortex is a functionally defined portion of the frontal lobe. There are four principal gyri in the frontal lobe. The precentral gyrus is directly anterior to the central sulcus, running parallel to it and contains the primary motor cortex, which controls voluntary movements of specific body parts. Three horizontally arranged subsections of the frontal gyrus are the superior frontal gyrus, the middle frontal gyrus, and the inferior frontal gyrus. The inferior frontal gyrus is divided into three parts, the orbital part, the triangular part and the opercular part. The frontal lobe contains most of the dopaminergic neurons in the cerebral cortex. The dopaminergic pathways are associated with reward, attention, short-term memory tasks, planning, and motivation. Dopamine tends to limit and select sensory information coming from the thalamus to the forebrain. The frontal lobe is the largest lobe of the brain and makes up about a third of the surface area of each hemisphere. On the lateral surface of each hemisphere, the central sulcus separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. The lateral sulcus separates the frontal lobe from the temporal lobe. The frontal lobe can be divided into a lateral, polar, orbital, above the orbit, also called basal or ventral, and medial part. Each of these parts consists of a particular gyrus. The lateral part consists of the lateral part of the superior frontal gyrus, also the middle frontal gyrus, and the inferior frontal gyrus. The polar part consists of the frontopolar cortex also the transverse frontopolar gyri, and the frontomarginal gyrus. The orbital part consists of the lateral orbital gyrus, the anterior orbital gyrus, the posterior orbital gyrus, the medial orbital gyrus, and the gyrus rectus. The medial part consists of the medial part of the superior frontal gyrus, and the cingulate gyrus. The gyri are separated by sulci, e.g. The precentral gyrus is in front of the central sulcus, and behind the precentral sulcus. The superior and middle frontal gyri are divided by the superior frontal sulcus. The middle and inferior frontal gyri are divided by the inferior frontal sulcus. Excuse me. Please comment about what interests you in the frontal lobe of the brain. Continuing. In humans. The frontal lobe reaches full maturity only after the 20s. The prefrontal cortex, in particular, continues in maturing till the second and third decades of life, which, thereafter, marks the cognitive maturity associated with adulthood. A small amount of atrophy, however, is normal in the aging person's frontal lobe. Fagel, in 2009, studied atrophy of the brain in people aged 60 to 91 years. The 142 healthy participants were scanned using MRI. Their results were compared to those of 122 participants with Alzheimer's disease. A follow-up one year later showed there to have been a marked volumetric decline in those with Alzheimer's and a much smaller decline, averaging 0.5%, in the healthy group. These findings corroborate those of Coffey, who in 1992 indicated that the frontal lobe decreases in volume approximately 0.5 to 1% per year.
The entirety of the frontal cortex can be considered the action cortex, much as the posterior cortex is considered the sensory cortex. It is devoted to action of one kind or another. Skeletal movement, ocular movement, speech control, and the expression of emotions. In humans, the largest part of the frontal cortex, the prefrontal cortex, or PFC, is responsible for internal purposeful mental action, commonly called reasoning or prefrontal synthesis. The function of the PFC involves the ability to project future consequences that result from current actions. PFC functions also include override and suppression of socially unacceptable responses as well as differentiation of tasks. The PFC also plays an important part in integrating longer non-task-based memories stored across the brain. These are often memories associated with emotions derived from input from the brain's limbic system. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe for more anatomy content. Goodbye.